Nucleo WL55JC2 port preparation. Within this exercise, we will use single wire viewer option, and uh, let's uh, discuss a bit the basics. So the most of the ARM Cortex M cores, so except ARM Cortex M0 and M0 Plus, have a dedicated peripheral called uh, Instrumentation Trace Macrocell ITM. Uh, this peripheral can be used to send some data uh, from the MCU, so it can be anything which is addressable, so it can be global variable, it can be content of the special register, and uh, the data can be sent uh, over additional pin, which is called single wire output, SWO. So this uh, pin is uh, connected to PB3, and the pin out of the microcontroller. STM32CubeIDE uh, toolchain can display this, this information using a single wire viewer. It can be displayed uh, as a classical terminal view, so text display, or it can be uh, displayed as well as graphical way. On the Nucleo WL55JC board, which we are using within this exercise, SWO pin, so PB3, is not connected to ST-Link by default, so we need to use an, a wire to connect two pins uh, to have uh, this functionality available. On next slides, I would present how to do it on Nucleo board. The simplest way to connect SWO with PB3 is to use a wire. In such a case, uh, we need to connect the one of the pins on CN10, which we can see on the right side of the board. It is in fact the fourth pin, the left side of this CN10, counting from the bottom of the board. We need to connect this pin with uh, the underscore SWO pin, which is located on the jumpers area within the central part of the board. This you can see on the pictures on the screen. Another option, uh, not temporary but uh, permanent, uh, would be to use uh, jumper modifications. We need to modify two jumpers. Uh, we need to set SB8 jumper, which is located on the top side of the board, very close to the CN11 fields, and uh, on the right side of the shield of the, our microcontroller. This is the right picture and we need to remove SB31 jumper, which is located on the bottom side of the board, uh, just on the right side of CN9 uh, connector. By doing this, uh, our SWO will be connected to PB3, and uh, there would be no need to, con to use any wires to connect those two uh, pins uh, together. Interprocessor communication on stm 32 wl 55 Example description. Within our exercise, we'll use a shared buffer, which will be initially uh, cleared, so it will contain all zeros. And then within a Cortex M0 Plus, we will have a local buffer. It will be 32 components of the sine wave. And uh, within Cortex M4 area, we will have two buffers. The first one would be 32 samples of the square wave. And uh, there would be a user buffer, which would be initially uh, square wave uh, as well. Uh, we will monitor the content of user buffer by copying it, its content to the global variable one by one in the loop, and we'll monitor this global variable using a single wire viewer monitoring, which you can see on the screen. So there is an example of this square wave, which we can see later on on the screen. So this is the initial uh, state after the reset. Let's analyze this application step by step. So at the beginning, after the reset, we can see the situation like the following. User buffer on Cortex-M4 will contain uh, the square wave as it is initialized with this uh, content at the beginning. Within the Cortex-M0 plus space, uh, within the local buffer, we've got uh, the sine uh, sinusoidal samples and the shared buffer contains all zeros. So on single wire viewer, we will see the square wave data. Once we press either B1 or B3 button, both of them are assigned to Cortex-M0+, the sine buffer 
would be copied uh, to the shared buffer and after this operation will be completed IPCC will generate an interrupt that the data has been transferred to the shared buffer this TX direction this uh, interrupt is uh, will be raised on Cortex M4 and uh, after this Cortex M4 will copy the content of the shared buffer to its user buffer it would replace the existing square wave samples with the sine wave samples and after this operation we will see on the single wire viewer the sine wave samples instead after this operation a cortex m4 will clear the content of the shared buffer and it will send uh, the confirmation that the data has been received by raising the interrupt on rx uh, direction this interrupt would be raised on a Cortex M0 Plus and it would be the, the sign for Cortex M0 Plus that it's possible to uh, send new data to the shared buffer as the previous uh, one has been already used by Cortex M4. In the meantime, if we will press B2 button, uh, which is assigned to Cortex M4, Cortex M4 will copy the content of its square uh, buffer to user buffer, which would replace the sine wave samples with the square wave samples. And we will see again on single wire viewer square wave instead of the sine wave. Short description of the example we would like to create. We can reuse one of the previous examples, uh, this with three buttons and three LEDs. Uh, within this exercise we'll use only three buttons, LEDs will be not used. Uh, then we need to add IPCC module and assign it to both cores so with interrupt generation. Then both cores will share the buffer located at the end of SRAM area of the MCU. This is in fact the um, close to the finish line of uh, Cortex-M0 plus uh, SRAM area. Okay, let's prepare an example step by step. Uh, I will use stm 32 cube IDE and I will create a new project. Uh, so this is my empty workspace and I can use either create a new stm 32 project link over here or go directly to the file new stm 32 project. So I need to select my microcontroller. So this is stm 32 WL55 JC. It's enough to put on the part of the name. Uh, this is our micro, it's quite easy to recognize it because there is a board equipped with exactly the same microcontroller and this board we will use within this exercise. So I go to next, important here is uh, to enable this multi CPUs configuration as it would allow us to create two projects for both cores and uh, my project name it would be IPCC. Then I press finish. Okay, after a while we can see the pinout, so I would start with the buttons. So first one is PA0, left uh, uh, button on mouse, then GPIO XT0, right button on mouse, pin reservation, will assign it to Cortex M0+, then PA1, uh, left button on mouse, XT1, right button on mouse, pin reservation and Cortex M4, and PC6, left button on mouse, XT6 roll, and right button on mouse, pin reservation, Cortex M0 Plus as well. Then we need to activate pull-ups for those uh, three uh, pins. So I go to system and core, GPIO, and uh, over here, if I would click anywhere on the, on the, in this row, I'm selecting GPIO pull up pull down and I'm selecting pull up for all of those three edited pins. Okay, next uh, we will enable IPCC. So I go to this uh, IPCC and I'm activating it for both cores. 
this automatically, acti automatically activating interrupts for both cores as well. Uh, we need to do one more thing with NGPIOs. I forgot about it. It's to enable the interrupts for both cores on those three channels. External interrupt channel 1 for Cortex M4 and uh, channel 0 and channel 6 uh, for Cortex M0. Plus. The next uh, step is to activate the debug interface. So this is within trace and debug. I just click on it and select JTAG and the trace. The last option, so trace asynchronous serial wire. So we will use three pins, PA13, PA14 and PB3. PB3 is an additional pin, it is single wire output. It allows us to get some messages from the core, which are sent synchronously with the core and can be used to monitor some variables or some uh, content of some registers as well. So we will use it to communicate with our both uh, cores. Just for the verification, I would just check the clock configuration. So within the clock configuration, we can see that both cores are working on a multi-speed internal oscillator on 4 MHz without PLL, so we'll keep this default configuration. Then we can generate the code for both cores by clicking this, uh, this icon, this button. It is, uh, it's, there is a warning that I will switch to CC++ perspective from this CubeMX1. So I just click yes. And now we can see that the code is generated for both projects. So we've got project for Cortex-M4 and Cortex-M0+. Both of them will have uh, its own copy of uh, main.c file, independent one, uh, its own linker files, and uh, its own uh, sources, so we'll have two completely independent uh, code areas for Cortex M0 Plus and Cortex M4. But please remember that we've got one common set of peripherals which are shared between those two uh, cores. Okay, the project generation is finished. Now we can do the code uh, processing.